Let's get right into the first hand. It folds all the way to the small blind who makes it 25. I look down at pocket aces in the big blind. I three bet to $60. He only has about $300 in a stack, so I don't want to make it too big here. I definitely want him to call, which he does. So going to our first flop, which comes out, king, queen, four, rainbow. Whenever my opponent raises in the small blind and then calls a 3-bet at a position, I put him on a lot of pocket pairs, so this flop is not too good for me getting value. However, I am going to c-bet, trying to get called by all kings, maybe even a queen, or possibly some straight draws. I make it $50, and he pretty quickly folds, so we end up taking down our first pot here, back at Seminole Hard Rock, playing 5-10. All right, moving right along here, there's three limps to me, and I complete in the small blind with 9, 10 of hearts before the big blind puts in a raise to $60. It folds all the way back around to me, and I feel like most of the time this could be a fold, but against this player, I feel like I do have a little bit of an edge against him, and I feel like his range is pretty face up here to premium hands, so I make the call looking to either hit a big board or potentially bluff him off his hand. The flop comes out king, seven, eight with two clubs. We flop an open-ended straight draw here. I check it over to him, and he insta-checks back. Go into the turn, which is the jack of clubs. Giving us a straight, but there are three clubs on the board. I lit out for $100, trying to get value from a bunch of hands here. When he raises pre-flop and then checks back that flop, I think he has a lot of hands like pocket queens, ace queen, ace jack, or possibly jacks or tens. So whenever this turn card is a jack, he could improve to a set. He could also improve to the queen high flush draw if he has ace queen with the queen of clubs, or pocket queens with the queen of clubs. I could assume he never has a flush here because I think he'd be c-betting that almost 100% on the flop. He also looked back at his cards whenever I bet, which is indicative of him not knowing which suit he has. And if he had a suited hand like ace queen of clubs or ace ten of clubs, he would most likely remember that pre-flop. So he tanks for about 30 seconds and makes the call for $100, going to the river which pairs the board. It's the king of spades. This river card is bittersweet. If he has a hand like pocket jacks, he now improves to a full house, which beats us. However, if he has a hand like queens, ace, jack, or even pocket tens, when the king pairs again, it's less likely that I have a king. Maybe he'll hero call us a little lighter now with this river. So I put out a $275 bet. I'm really trying to target hands like queens and ace jack or queen jack, trying to get a light call from him with this bet sizing. He tanks for about a minute and decides to fold. He later told me he had ace queen with ace of clubs, so he was thinking about turning his ace of clubs blocker into a bluff, and it might have worked. If he would have raised big on the river like eight or nine hundred or a thousand dollars, I may actually fold my hand, putting him on a flush or possibly a full house, or maybe even quad kings. Luckily, however, it didn't come to that and we weren't put to a tough decision. We end up scooping another pot here at 510. We are running pretty good so far, winning our first two hands before looking down at king-queen offsuit from under the gun. I raise it up to $35. My strategy in these games is to always raise my hands. I don't really want to do much limping and I don't do much calling either unless I'm in late position. So I want to be the one raising pre-flop. I want to be the one betting and having the betting lead on the flop, the turn, and the river. So I make it $35. Next act calls 35, and the button calls 35. The flop comes out king six deuce with two spades, and I know I said I like to have the betting lead and the aggression. However, I am out of position on a pretty dry board, so I decide to check, either letting my opponents bluff or possibly catch up with a worse hand. It checks all the way to the button who puts out a $60 bet. I look at his stack, and he only has about $200 remaining, so I raise it up to $300 here, trying to get it all in with him. He thinks for just a little bit of time and makes the call. One, two, King and a queen. Or Our top pair, King, holds up against a 10 high flush draw, so we end up taking down another pot here. We are three for three to start off the session, so we're running pretty good so far. I switch seats here so I have a better view of the table before looking down on the big blind at ace queen offsuit. Cutoff raises to 35. I put in a 3 bet to 125 and he makes the call. Going heads up here to the board of king jack 4 with one heart. I put out a pretty standard C bet here. I slightly down bet here to $100, which is what I'd be doing with all my bluffing hands like ace queen, ace 10, or queen 10 suited. I also would be betting $100 with hands like aces, ace king, kings, and jacks. So I want to be betting the same amount of money with my bluffs as I would be with my value hands so that my opponents can't exploit me. My opponent thinks for about 30 seconds and ends up making the call for $100. Going to the turn which pairs the king. I go back and forth in my head for a while of whether I want to continue to bluff here and put more money in the pot or possibly just check and give up, and I decide ultimately to check. My opponent now thinks for about 30 seconds and puts out a bet of $100, and given this bet sizing on this paired board, I could be drawing dead or possibly to only four outs, so I decide to make the fold. 
When this video comes out, I'll already be in Austin, Texas. I'm going to be playing a 2-5 No Limit live stream Thursday night, July 8th at Texas Card House. If you guys want to watch, make sure to tune into their channel at 7 p.m. Central Time. If you watch this video past July 8th, you can also watch the archive footage. I'll put a link to their channel below. And then two days later on July 10th in Round Rock, Texas, I'm going to be playing on the Lodge live stream. I'm super excited for this. This is going to be a 5-5 uncapped game, so it should be pretty big. Make sure to check out their channel, which I'll have in my description below. Going to be playing on Saturday night, July 10th. And if you miss it, make sure to go check out their channel. You can watch the archive footage as well. Back to the hands here, we have King Queen of Spades in the big blind, and there's an under the gun plus one raise to 25. There's a button three bet to $75, and I don't want to be cold calling a three bet out of position, so I put in a cold four bet, I make it $250. The initial raiser of $25 is a weaker recreational player, and the button is a pretty good reg. So I know the button can be isolating this $25 open with a wide range of hands, which is why I put in the cold four bet here. I'm turning my hand into a bluff, trying to take down this money preflop, trying to attack the button's three bet range. Best case scenario is both opponents fold and I take down $100 uncontested, but if I do get called, I have a hand that plays very well post-flop. I can flop some straight draws and some flush draws and some good top pairs. Under the gun plus one decides $250 sounds good to him. He makes the call as well as the button. So we are going three ways here to the flop. I would really like some spades. How about some queens or possibly some kings, but the dealer does not cooperate. It comes out pretty bad for our hand. 10, 7, 3, all red cards, so we totally miss here. I could be C betting, but given the fact that I'm out of position against two players, I decide to check. Now under the gun plus one, insta checks behind, and the button checks as well. So we're going to the turn, which is good. It's a king. We improved to top pair here, which is always nice, and now I have to decide how much should I bet. And given the fact that it's a multi-way four bet pot, I don't want to be betting too big here. I'm trying to get called by hands like queen jack, which is open-ended, or ace jack, or ace queen, which is a gut shot. So I put out a pretty small bet here. I bet $225. When there's not that many hands that my opponents can call with, I want to bet smaller so that they can call with a wider range. If I bet like $500 here, my opponents will only call when they have me beat with a hand like pocket tens or ace king. So under the gun plus one pretty quickly folds and now the action's on the button and he makes the call. Given the fact that the button checked back the flop and then just called me on the turn, I don't think he has too strong of a hand. I think he has a hand like king jack, possibly ace king, and then a lot of draws. So when the river card is the five of clubs, all the draws miss. And now I have to decide should I bet or possibly check to induce him to let him bluff. With all my history with this player, I rarely see him bluff, and I don't think he's ever going to be bluffing on this river in a 4-bet pot when it doesn't change anything at all, so I decide not to check here. I'm going to keep betting, trying to get thin value from his king jack and possibly king 9, so I put out a bet of $500. Looking back now, I'm still not really sure about this river bet, and I want you guys to comment down below what you guys think. Should I be checking here? Should I be betting 500, maybe 6 or 700, or maybe even bigger? Let me know what you guys think. Given the fact that this player likes to call a lot, I think it's a decent bet. He thinks for about 30 seconds and decides to fold. We end up taking a pretty aggressive line here, cold 4 betting the king queen in the big blind, but it paid off for us this time, ended up scooping a pretty big pot, moving on to the next hand. About 10 minutes go by and we end up upgrading our king-queen suited all the way up to ace-king suited, a beautiful premium hand here under the gun, raise it up to $35, the button calls $35, and the big blind calls $35. We flop the nut flush draw on 10 6, 7 with two diamonds, big blind checks to us, and given the fact that I raised under the gun and my opponents called in the button in the big blind, this board is going to smash their ranges a lot more than it will smash mine, so I don't want to bet the flop and get raised. So I check and the button puts out a bet, he makes it $60. The big blind decides to call $60, and now my choice is pretty easy. I'm not going to raise here. I'm not going to fold. So I call $60 as well. We are still three ways here with around $285 in the middle. The dealer collects the chips and puts out a pretty fantastic turn card. It's a jack of diamonds, giving us the nut flush and a royal flush draw. The big blind checks to us, and I put out a bet of $100. Trying to lead out here, trying to get value from all pair and flush draws. Maybe two pairs like jack 10, or possibly a straight like 8-9 suited. Unfortunately, $100 is a little too steep for both of my opponents. They end up folding. I asked the dealer to rabbit hunt the river just to make sure it wasn't the king of diamonds, which would give us a royal. We don't actually get high hands at this table because we don't pay the promotion because we only paid time break. The dealer shows me that the river was the eight of hearts, so we missed the royal, but we did hit the nut flush. Take down another pot here at 510. Thank you. 
About 30 minutes later, we move to the main game. Look down at King, Queen of Hearts. We raise it up to $50 over a limp. The button calls and the limper calls. So going three ways, the flop of Queen, 4-5 with two spades. Flopping top pair with a King kicker. Under the gun, plus one limper checks. And I put out a pretty sizable bet here, $100. Trying to get called by all flush draws, straight draws, and weaker queens. The button ends up folding and the limper calls. Going heads up here to the turn, which is the eight of spades. Pretty terrible card. Brings in the front door flush and also brings in six, seven, which was an open ended on the flop. So whenever she checks it over to me, I decide to check this one back. The river card does improve us. It's a king. So now we make top two pair. The limper ends up snap checking it over to us. And now I think I have to go for value. I then look at her stack and she only has about 250 or $300 left, which is about a pot size bet. So I decide to just put her all in here, trying to get her to hero call with any queen or any king. I bet $400 and she snap calls, which is never really good. We show king queen for top two pair and she shows king nine of spades for the king eye flush. She got the best run out possible, hitting the flush on the turn and then giving us two pair on the river. So luckily she only had about $300. It could have been a lot worse. That was basically the first significant pot we lost all session, but next up, we look down at pocket jacks in the small blind, under the gun plus one race to 35, everyone else folds, and I make the call. So going heads up here to the flop, which we flop a set on king jack four with two hearts. I've said this before and I like to play a little bit different. I don't want to play like everybody else. So I decide to lead out here with my middle set. I bet $75. And my reasoning behind this is that this opponent could potentially float me light trying to bluff me later on. He might then put in a value raise on the flop thinking that I'm kind of weak given the fact that I'm leading out. He might raise a hand like aces, ace, king, or king, queen. And then I can maybe put in a three bet. Or he could possibly just try to bluff with a hand that has basically no equity at all. However, he makes the call for 75. So going to the turn which is a brick. It's a seven of clubs. All right, so I let out on the flop and now I'm going to check the turn. I want to let him potentially bluff with hands that he floated me with or also value on himself with a hand like ace, king, aces, or king, queen. If I check raise him on the flop, he'll most likely fold all of his one pair of hands, which would suck if I have a set. So I end up checking it over to him and he puts out a bet here of $155. So my plan at first was to check call the turn and then potentially check raise the river. But given this bet sizing, I think he most likely has a one pair hand. So I decide now I'm gonna change up my plan. I'm gonna check call the turn and then lead out on the river as long as it's not a heart. The river is an offsuit nine, so it does bring in queen 10 for a straight, but I'm gonna stick with my plan here. I decide to bet big, trying to get called by all of his one pair of hands or possibly two pair like king nine. I put out a pot size bet of $525. After looking back at this hand, I wasn't even sure I wanted to put it in the vlog. Just because I played it so odd and so weird and I might get some backlash. People saying that I should always just check raise the flop and then bet the turn and then bet the river. But I want to try to play a little bit different, especially against opponents that I play with almost every day. I want to keep them guessing. I want them to think that I might have some draws, that I might be leading with weak hands, that I might be leading with strong hands. I want them to always guess. I don't want them to think it's easy to play against me. So this line is pretty weird. I bet the flop. Check called the turn and now lead pot size bet on the river. He decides to fold after thinking for about a minute and I'm okay with my line, but let me know down in the comments what you guys think. We have been playing about four hours now and our stack is up over $4,000, running pretty good. However, the next couple hands don't really go our way. Next hand we're going to go over, I have Queen Jack of Clubs, a beautiful suited Broadway hand, raise it up to $35 in the cutoff, and only the button calls. We go to the flop, which we flop top two pair on Queen Jack 4 with two hearts. I made a big hand, so I'm going to bet it. I bet $40, the button thinks for probably 20 seconds, and decides to call. The turn is the Ace of Clubs, which I don't really like. It improves hands like Ace Jack or Ace Queen to a better two pair, and it also improves a hand like King 10, which was open-ended to a straight. So I decide to actually check my two pair. Now the action's on the button who decides to bet. He puts out $130, and I don't feel too good about this situation. I guess he could be betting a hand like Ace 10 or Ace King, but I think he'd be three betting Ace King preflop. So I can't fold, but I definitely don't feel too great. I decide to call the turn and if he puts a lot of pressure on me on the river, I may actually fold. The river card is a pretty interesting one. The river is a 10 which brings a one liner to a king and I think about turning my hand into a bluff trying to get him to fold ace jack or ace queen, leading out huge on the river but ultimately I decide to check. Now the action's on him, he thinks for about 10 or 20 seconds and shows pocket jacks. Wow, that's sick. You win, you win, you win. Oh, 
Pretty wild hand there. We flopped top two pair versus a set, and we got the best run out possible to lose the minimum, so I'll take it. Over the next hour or so, we pick up a lot of playable hands, but we just cannot really smack a board. We're just losing small pots of $100, $200, $300 before moving into the last two hands of the night. We get it pretty aggressive in this next hand with 10 8 of spades. There's a limp and the button raises to $45. Instead of calling in the big blind, I decided to put in a 3 bet to $200. The limper folds and now the action's back on the button. I think that he could be isolating the limper with a pretty wide range. However, his range is pretty strong. He puts in a 4 bet to $450. Last hand we're going to go over here, I have ace-queen in the cutoff, folds to me, and I end up raising to $35. Only the button calls. After two hours of missing every single board, we finally hit one. It comes out queen-queen-8 with two clubs, making us trips. We end up putting out a c-bet of $30. We also have the backdoor nut flush draw as well. The button thinks for about 20 seconds and calls $30. As if the flop couldn't get any better, the turn is an ace, giving us a full house, queens full of aces. I think maybe I should be checking here given the fact that we have the board so locked up, but I'm going to keep betting trying to get value from all of his flush draws, some of his straight draws, or weaker queens. I put out a bet of $150, my opponent thinks for about 10 seconds, and folds. That was our last significant hand of the night, so we end up racking up our chips, heading to the cashier, and cashing out for the night. All right, closing out this vlog here in my signature spot here at Hollywood Hard Rock. This is where I do all the outros outside right by the parking garage, and it feels good to be home, that is for sure. If you guys haven't yet, you've got to check out Hollywood Hard Rock in Florida. It's amazing. One of the best poker rooms I've ever been to. Great staff, great dealers. The action's good. They got games from 1-2 up to 5-10 PLO, so you guys got to check it out. That is for sure. I love this place. I play here three to five days a week, so... Maybe we can play on the same table if you make your way down. As for today's session, I was in the game for $3,000, ended up cashing out for $29.84, so I lost $16, which is much better than the shit show I had in Vegas. If you guys were watching the Vegas vlogs, you knew I lost $9,000 in Vegas. But so far, since we've been out back to Florida, I've recovered $8,000 of that $9,000 downswing. So that is good, good news for sure. Feels good to be home. All right, so a question that I get a lot of the times in the comments or on DMs, and I've also asked myself a ton, is when to stop your poker session? Should you play until you're up a certain amount of money or should you play a certain amount of hours? Should you play until you lose a certain amount of money? And there's really no great answer, honestly. It's kind of tricky. So as you guys saw in today's vlog, I was up in the beginning. I was winning, winning, winning. I was up over $1,000. And then the last four hours of the session, I got cooler there with Queen Jack. Couldn't really get too much going. A couple bluffs didn't get through. Ended up basically breaking even for the day. So if I would have left four hours before that, I would have won $1,000. But I played my eight hour session and I lost 16 bucks. So the answer is basically two things. All right, so the first scenario we will talk about here, if you have a ton of buy-ins for the game, let's say you have 20, 30, maybe 40 buy-ins for whatever game you're playing, you should play as long as that game is good. Even if you set a certain amount of time for the game, if the game is good and there's people losing money and there's action players, you should just keep playing. Doesn't matter if you're up a ton of money or down a ton of money. In poker, it's just one big long session. It doesn't matter if you lose 500 bucks right before you leave, you could literally win a thousand bucks the very next session. So it doesn't really matter session to session to session. Even though we keep track of it like that, it really doesn't matter. It's just one long big poker session. So if you have the buy-ins, try to play in the game that's the best game possible for as long as you can, no matter if you're up a ton or down a ton, just try to get those hours in. However, if you're trying to build a bankroll, let's say you only have 600 bucks or you have 800 bucks in your bankroll, and you sit down at one, two. You buy in for $100 and you double up twice. Now you have $400. Get out of there. Book the win. If you're trying to build up that bankroll, you gotta chip away. You gotta make small wins. Boom, boom, boom. Try not to get in the game for a ton of money. So two different sides there. If you have a ton of buy-ins for the game, try to play as long as you can while the game is good, no matter how much you're up or how much you're down. If you're starting from the bottom and you're just trying to chip up there, just get in there, get small wins and leave. You know, Take a break and come back maybe. Try to basically run it up 
go back and then buy back in for a hundred bucks. Just try to keep building up that bankroll. So for example, what I do now is I try to play about eight hours. So every time I come here, no matter how bad I'm running or how good I'm running, I try to play eight hours. Sometimes I'll extend it if the game's really good. There's a lot of action players and the game is great. I'll extend it to 10 or 11 or 12 hours sometimes. And then let's say the game is terrible. I might only play five hours. So now I have the freedom to do that. But back in the day when I first started playing, I would try to get there and if I make 200 bucks, I'm out of there. I'm cashing in that, that win and coming back the next day and trying to chip away at it. So if you guys are in either category, I wish you guys the best at the table and uh, hopefully you do well. So as I said earlier in the vlog, I am going to be in Austin, Texas when this video comes out. I'm gonna be there playing on the live stream July 8th, TCH Live, and then July 10th on the Lodge Live. So tune in for that. They're gonna have archived and everything so you guys can watch it later. But I appreciate all the support, all the comments, guys. It's great. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers, so keep pushing those uh, like buttons and commenting down below. Helps the channel grow a lot. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'll see you.